Hi, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Wednesday at Home. I really hope to encourage you today, and then Mark Carden, our executive pastor, is going to talk to us about finances, and I hope that's an encouragement to you as well. I shared with you last week that we're moving to phase three of our reopen plan on August the 24th and following. Um, and so that's going to mean classes and watch parties and students beginning to gather soon after. But it's not going to mean Sunday services in person. We're not going to be gathering for Sunday services yet. And I know we're all feeling the, the weight of that. Uh, last week I said some of us feel that a whole lot more deeply than others because Sunday morning gatherings for worship is the main way that we've learned to connect with God our whole life. Maybe you grew up in a church and the, the emphasis that you heard was, listen, just make sure you go to church. I mean, whether, no matter how you behave Monday through Saturday in some cases, you know, just make sure you go to church on Sunday. Um, and some of you grew up in churches, I know, where there were such great churches, the teaching was inspiring and the worship was so inspiring that it was such a significant part of your, your personal relationship with God that it's hard to imagine uh, continuing to grow spiritually without that opportunity to gather with people every week. And now during Corona Geddon, it feels like the rug's kind of been pulled out from under your feet because we're not gathering in person for worship. And while it's a gift to be able to gather online, we all know it's just not quite the same. Now, if that's how you feel, and I know it is how some of us feel, I wanted to give you some encouragement about things that we do know and we can commit to. Last week, I focused on just simply grow spiritually by continuing to walk with God. I mean, that sounds so simple just to say, oh, well, just walk with God. Listen, gathering for worship can encourage your walk with God, but you can walk with God in a season when we're not able to gather in person. You can open your Bible in the mornings and read God's Word. And when you open your Bible, God opens His mouth and He speaks and we, we speak back to Him in prayer. And the exciting thing is when we actually do what God's saying to us, we obey Him, it helps us connect with God in inspiring ways. Well, today I want to urge you to do something else that we can all do, even if we can't meet in person these days, we can all do to stay connected with God, and that is stay engaged in community. Begin by even going to clearcreekresources.org and listen to the podcast that Carl Garcia and I did on community. And it just reminds us of how essential it is to stay in community. I mean, we'll say things like, you know, you're not alone and you're not. And don't try to do this alone. We do life together. All of those things, true and important. But right here in the heat of summer with coronavirus, we need to stay connected to one another. Maybe through a phone call or across the driveway or sharing a meal or serving some other people together. The New Testament is filled with the phrase, one another. And so I want to remind you of what it says so that we can one another, one another. I mean, it says that we need one another. It says that we listen to one another. We pray for one another and serve one another. We outdo one another in showing honor. Think of that. It's like he's urging us to be competitive about showing honor to each other. Of course, we love one another and we live in harmony with one another. But... Let us not pass judgment on one another. Rather, welcome one another as Christ welcomed you. Encourage one another, maybe with a card or a phone call or a text prayer. Comfort one another and bear one another's burdens because there are a lot of burdens to bear these days. And let's stir up one another to love and good deeds. And we can speak to one another in hymns and psalms and spiritual songs. Now that's being creative. But let's not get on social media and compare with one another. Really, the Bible says, don't compare with one another. After all, that's not the whole story anyway. Don't compare with one another or devour one another or even envy one another. No, instead, clothe yourselves with humility toward one another and forgive one another. 
and bear with one another. You have a family member you need to bear with, or maybe a friend who's always ranting political stuff, you know. Yeah, you got to bear with people. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and always seek to do good for one another. And in all of this, we'll have fellowship with one another. And one day soon, when we've endured the pandemic and we've stayed connected in spite of all the challenges, one day we will greet one another with a holy kiss. I look forward to that day when we will show hospitality to one another again. And we'll do that in person. We'll worship God with one another. So for now, even with the challenges and the screen fatigue and the blasted heat of summer, let's make time for gathering in group with one another. Get online or meet in person. Get around the scriptures as disciples of Jesus and follow him with one another. And if you're not in a group, I hope you will go uh, on our website and register for group link, which is September the 13th. It'll be an online experience to help you connect in a small group. And if your group is taking a break for the summer, make plans now to reconnect with your group. And if your group is chugging along, well, good for you. I mean, keep it up. We need each other. The church is not a building or a meeting. It is a people. And people are connected to one another. Now, I hope you'll welcome Mark Carden, our executive pastor, who leads us so well in so many different areas, but he's going to give you an update on the finances at Clear Creek Community Church. Thanks, everybody. Hey, Clear Creek. Wanted to give you a financial update. Well, as of July 31st, which is four months into our fiscal year, I'm happy to report that we are only 5% behind in our budgeted giving. Um, you know, it's because of your faithfulness and your generosity that we find ourselves in that position. So way to go. Also wanted to tell you about uh, three fairly large projects we've had going on the last four months. Um, the first is we painted uh, Peeweeville hallways and classrooms uh, at the Egret Bay campus. And this is the first time that area has been painted since we moved into that building in uh, November of 2004. Uh, so, much needed uh, upgrade there. Uh, also, if you've ever driven onto the uh, Clear Lake campus and gone into that parking lot, uh, you know that that parking lot has some uh, rough spots. And so what we did was we, we took that whole parking lot out and replaced it, uh, the whole thing, with, with asphalt. Um, that is a uh, much needed uh, repair, and please stop by there and see it. And finally, uh, at, again, at the Eager Bay campus, just north of the Creek Kids building, we have a parking lot there that has uh, several handicap spots, and you've probably noticed that uh, it has potholes and it actually gets a lot of water runoff, which causes uh, an erosion uh, of that asphalt. So what we've, we're doing now is we're uh, trying to get a, a permit from the city of League City to begin that work, and we will replace that uh, whole parking lot area with concrete. And so those are, those are three uh, big projects we've had going on these four months, and we've uh, chosen this time to do them because we don't have people in the buildings and we don't have cars in the parking lot. So it makes it much more efficient and effective to be able to do that, that work. And much of that money we had set aside uh, previously to accomplish those tasks. So Clear Creek, thank you. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your faithfulness.